kombucha is easy to make and great for our gut health. I'm going to go over some benefits of drinking it, but be sure to watch to the end as I include a quick lesson on how to make it. I help people who struggle with eczema and psoriasis by teaching you how to get the clear, beautiful skin you dream of without using steroid creams, pills, or biologics. And if you don't already know me, my name is Krista Harkis, and I am a certified functional nutritionist and the creator of the Gut Better online course. If you want to start your journey to clear skin, just go to www.kristaharkis.com forward slash clear skin. A lot of people these days are recognizing the benefits of probiotics for gut health, and it is important to maintain our gut health as our microbiome makes up for many of our deficiencies. So if our gut health is suffering, then we are suffering. Our gut bugs digest fibers, affect our metabolism, affect our mood and behavior, create many vitamins for our bodies, and secrete many chemicals that control the systems within our bodies, such as our immune system and our nervous system. To make sure that our microbiome is functioning properly, we must ensure that we are eating the proper foods that in turn feed our gut bugs. The good bacteria love whole, organic, plant-based foods that are high in fiber and nutrients. And the bad bacteria in our gut are going to be the ones that feed off of sugars, processed foods, and carbs. So why is consuming probiotics important? Well, it populates our gut with the right diversity of bacteria to protect us against inflammation, it aids in digestive function, and it supports our immune system. The right diversity is key as scientists are beginning to link certain missing bacteria with certain health conditions, such as low bifidobacterium and high candida are related to eczema and allergies. I would love to know in the comments below if you make your own kombucha. This is where kombucha comes in. This probiotic drink provides your gut with the right diversity of bacteria. Keep in mind that if you have a histamine intolerance, kombucha can actually make your eczema or psoriasis worse. Making your own is always the best as you have full control over the ingredients, the fermentation time, and even the flavor as you get into more advanced techniques. Also, when you make your own, it's not just another mass produced product. I have been making kombucha since I was about eight or nine years old, way before it was popular. My dad always said how great it is for us and he got me hooked. So here's how you can make it. So making kombucha is super simple. I have boiled six cups of water. I have an empty jar. You always want to use glass or plastic, never use metal. So six cups of water. And that is filtered water, distilled water, something that's not full of chlorine and chemicals. To the water, I'm going to add half a cup of sugar. Uh, this is raw cane sugar. I've tried coconut sugar, which unfortunately doesn't seem to work. So pretty much something sort of natural, but whatever works. And then green tea is what I use. You can use black tea. You can use white tea. Um, but I just use loose leaf because it's generally a higher quality than the tea bags. I have my own tea bag. And for this is a one liter, half a gallon. So if you're doing this size, then the six cups of water, the half a cup of sugar, and one tablespoon of loose tea are all going to be the correct measurements. If you're doing a different size container, then you're going to have to kind of there's tons of recipes on the internet. You can find the different sizes for those. So, one tablespoon. I'm going to make a huge mess of this, aren't I? That could happen. Not too bad. All right. 
So you've got the sugar in there, you've got the water in there. Now you just get the tea in there. And you're going to want to let this soak and steep for a while. Uh, sometimes they say, you, you know, if you don't want it super strong, you can take the tea bag out sooner. I take it out once it's fully cooled. So you don't want to put the kombucha starter and the scoby in when it's like really hot. Like you can't even touch it. <laughs> you definitely want to wait until it's at least cool enough that you can touch it. It's not burning hot. And yeah, so that's going to sit and wait. And once that's cooled, we're going to put one cup of the previous batch of kombucha. So one cup of the tea or juice or whatever you want to call it. And then the scoby. Okay, so it has now been a couple hours. This has cooled down to almost room temperature. I, again, no metal utensils, so I am using a wooden spoon to dig this out. That is good now. And I've got so many different scobies in here. So these are all the scobies. I've got multiple different ones. And apparently one has formed on top of all the others. <laughs> just from it sitting in the fridge. I think I'll use this one. Put one of those in. And you always need a cup of a previous batch. So that is a cup from the previous batch. Still have enough to cover the old ones. Well, it doesn't really matter if I stick another one in. I'm just using two only because I want to make sure that the ones that I have saved are fully covered in the juice because if they're not they'll go funny. But you just need one scoby and one cup of juice from the previous batch. And then you want to cover it up with something that's breathable. So I just have an old t-shirt that I've cut into pieces. Okay, so this is all covered up and ready to sit in a warm, dark place. So yeah, I mean, it could just be room temperature. It doesn't have to be heated or extra heated or anything, but as long as it's not freezing cold, like a cold room, and as long as it's dark because the sun will hurt it. So this goes and sits in a warm, dark place for a week or two, and it will be good. You can always test it and see if the fermentation is right for you. Uh, it will be obviously more sweet if you take it out sooner, and as time goes on, if it goes long, it will turn into vinegar. So you don't want to wait that long. This is ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this video as it was a bit different than my normal videos. If so, give it a like and be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a new video. And if it was helpful, be sure to share it with someone and I'll see you in the next video.